If you have your Bible, let's go to the book of Mark chapter chapter 16 verse 15. The book of Mark chapter 16 verse 15. What does he say? And he said unto them, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world. That word, go ye, is a commandment. And any man that shall obey, that shall command the wealth of God, must obey the commandment of God. All of us want to command the wealth of God, but we must obey the commandment of God. Let's go to number two. The book of Luke. Chapter 15 verse 10. I'm going to shock many of you this night. What does it say sir? But when thou art bidden. Likewise I say unto you. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Over one sinner that repented. Look up and look at me. When you win one soul, there will be spiritual reaction in the spirit realm that will lead to protection and provision and will lead to elongation of your life on earth and will lead to joy unspeakable. Every time you win one soul, I'm sure you remember I spoke about Phinehas, who was zealous in soul winning. And God set up a covenant of prosperity for him. Every great soul winner will attract multiply blessings from heaven. If we return to the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 17, whoever is busy serving God is not allowed to die like ordinary men. The Bible said when such a man is in trouble, God will fight for him as a man fights for the son that saves him. Satan knows what, I, I don't know, I've been wondering I don't know if you all remember the day I got up here and cried because of the slaughter of Nigerians. I said that day that I saw blood flow. I know that a sister who attends our meeting regularly, the wife saw me and the husband saw me and was mocking me and said it will never happen. A day will never come that Nigerians will be slaughtered. But just before it became un un uncontrollable, God gave us the privilege to hold a crusade in Kaduna, in where? In Saria. Again, where? Taraba. Where again? Medugri. We were able to move our equipment from here to Medugri. The governor said to me, Omar, I'm not sure of your safety, so I'll not be in town when you come, but I'll leave behind 30 mobile policemen to protect you. If they fail, well, they'll kill you in my absence. I don't know why God opened those doors for us and gave us also the privilege to hold one million man crusades in those places. You know, we had one in Gombe that was not completed, and one in Abuja, and Jaws. The one of Jaws, I was sure the governor gave us how many policemen? 200. 150 policemen. And as soon as we ended, those programs, the doors were closed. I don't know whether you know 
that the greatest you can do for God is to win souls for him. This, our big building, is for our comfort. It's not really for God. It's for our comfort. I want to make a very important statement. Every believer must first be a soul winner before becoming a pastor or an evangelist or a singer or a prophet or an apostle. You must first become what? A soul winner. And I want us to turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 32, verse 23. I'll show you a mystery. God likened soul winning to what happened between the sons of God and Reuben and the rest of Israel. Israel had conquered the city of Ork and Siphon. And they were about to go over to the other side of Jordan. But the, the sons of God and Reuben said to Moses, we will not go. Let Israel go alone. We will stay back. For this part of Jordan is good for sheep rearing and cattle rearing. We shall build sheepfold. We will not go with the rest of Israel to fight. We will stop here. There are many of us, just because we have received salvation, we don't care about carrying out this great holy war that is raging. I don't know whether you have heard how many people are being killed every day in the north. Only God knows why that carnage has not reached us. But you see, if we were aggressive in soul winning, if we were aggressive in soul winning, we should have been able to lead many of the Muslims to Christ. Or we could have asked God to go to the home of every emir. This God has great sense of humor and also awesome power. While in Zaria, they plan to kill me, which is okay by me. Everybody wants to kill me, but they don't have a mind that death has rejected. The day they were planning to harm me was the day Amia, the Emir's wife got the miracle of her life. And the Emir said, send for me for lunch. They had 50 grown-up men sing and say, you are welcome. Welcome. You are, they were saying, I didn't know how to respond to 50 men shouting, you are welcome. And the Emir said, can we have lunch? Can we... Can you pray for me? I'll pray for you. I was shocked when he said, the next time you come back to Zaria, your crusade must hold in the inner city of Zaria. I don't know if you know what that means. <laughs> I said to God, Father, mercy, mercy. He said, Reverend, I'll be sitting with you on that platform. Nobody will harm you. I took an in deliverance from fear. To hold a crusade right at the heart of the Muslims. Zaria city of all places. In Kaduna, an imam gave a prophecy that if I be allowed to preach in the north, they will have to in the three years set back. And therefore they should lynch me and stop me and kill me. That was okay by me too. Then God asked me to fly into Abuja and send my escort vehicles to, to escort me from Abuja to Kaduna. While the boys waited for me at the airport of Kaduna, 500 of them. And we came in by road to Kaduna. The governor, the governor then, Markafe, said he begged them not to harm me. And they said, 
to him, they didn't care about the consequences. That I must not walk, go back her life. He, he asked him, Omar, do you know I had to fast and pray for you? A Muslim. <laughs> and he surprised her when he prepared a jingle that said the leader of PFN is in town. He's here to pray for everybody. Everybody be at the venue of the prayer. So, it attracted a crowd of 900,000 people. He gave us a cash of 500,000 and 10 small cars. He was all over the place. But he said, Oh, I can't come. I'll send my deputy governor, the secretary to government every day to represent me. I am standing behind you. Madam, leave that to your hand. Don't sleep. We are discussing great warfare raging. There's a great holy war going on. My pain is that some of us don't seem to understand. If this Boko Haram boss will come down here with a carnage, boy, you boy, I don't know how many people will survive. I was amazed to see what God, how many cripples walked the second night in Kaduna. Seven of seven cripples walked and the governor paid New Nigeria to publish it and paid AIT to publish it. And they began to call him uh, al Haji brother John Marakafi. There is so much we can do. In Gombe, when we sang an ordinary chorus, to Araya Mama, a blind Muslim woman fell under the anointing and her eyes opened. The next day, there was no standing space. And Boko Haram boss came with a bomb. And the bomb refused to detonate. No. There is a level and a measure of anointing of God that can rest upon you. Your enemies will recognize it. We shouldn't be coming here to polish you every Wednesday and you go home and do nothing. Whereas I, your leader, I had the rest. We're on the road every weekend. They came after we had left, as I joined myself. The same bomb brought down the biggest and the largest Sequoia church building in Gombe. Leveled it flat. And they called me to ask, why didn't that bomb detonate the day we brought it to your presence? And they said they would be coming to you for me to answer that question. I asked Pastor Joe to check them into a good hotel. Well, one of them, the leader, he checked them there and the man wanted to see me for me to answer that question. My reply was, there are questions I must not answer. You don't tell your enemies your secrets. You don't join your enemy's army. Or do you? No. Right where you are this night, God wants you to be his extension. He wants you to carry his power. Can we run down to the book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 through verse 20? What does it say? The book of Matthew chapter 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them. He saying, came and spake unto them saying, All power is given oh, unto see, me. See, Jesus was saying, power that can stop a bomb from detonating. When we, when we arrived at Kaduna and drove straight to the venue of the program, and the men who were waiting for me at the airport to kill me were told that we had arrived and that our crowd was about 900,000. They stayed away because they knew I could have released that crowd against them. 
Only God can grant that kind of safety. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, all power. In, in Medugri, what shocked everybody was, for the second time in my ministry, cripples carried their wheelchairs. And the place went wild with excitement. So much that the governor, who said he would not be in town, sent for me. I said, Reverend, Reverend, can you please come? I want to see you now. Look at this bushman. You are calling me to cancel the crusade I'm preaching and come down to see you because you are governor. No, sir. I asked him to wait until the program was over. When we meet him, 10, 30 or 11, he waited until he, he said to me, can I touch the hand of a man that can make cripples carry their wheelchairs? That is what Jesus had in mind when he said, all power. Can somebody say, all power? All power. I think he was sure when I asked him, your excellency, is it true you sponsored the demolition of 52 church buildings? He said, Reverend, let me not answer that question, but I will rebuild all of them. He has not rebuilt them. He came to you and avoided me. <laughs> but the mark is there. At least when we meet, he will know who has power. The, the funny thing was, on our way to Medjugorje, there was this man in the aircraft who kept asking me, who are you? And I wasn't sure what the Muslims were planning and plotting. I said to him, I'm just an ordinary person. He said, no. Your dress shows you are not an ordinary person. I'll give you land in Abuja. I was a one-time federal minister. I'll give you copies of Koran. Who wants to read Koran? <laughs> The man harassed me over and again. And I kept telling him, Oh God, I am Mr. Nobody. Leave me alone. He asked me, Have you broken your fast? You know what that means? That is, I look like a Muslim. I should be fasting with them. And if really I know what they know, that they will bring me food to break the fast. And I said, Leave me alone, sir. Unfortunately, when the plane landed, there were how many police, how many pastors? 100 and, 150 pastors and 30 mobile policemen. He asked me, did you say you are nobody? And the whole of Medugri is waiting for you. Tell me who you are. I wasn't sure what our enemies were planning. Then one funny pastor said to him, this man, if he touches you, your sickness will go. If he touches you, poverty will go. And the man said to me, I won't let you go until you tell me who you are. I want you to hear me. We are on the winning side. We are on the winning side. But let's go back to chapter 32. We'll take verse 23 of the book of Numbers. Okay? Leave that to your diary. Bring that to your Bible. Moses said to the sons of God and Reuben, If you will not go with the rest of Israel to fight and drive away the condemned Canaanites, you have seen. Everyone here who will not be an aggressive soul winner, you have seen. And the Bible says your sin will find you out. There are so many of us who are at ease in Zion. We wake up in the morning, we think only about ourselves, not about others. But I want to say, number one, the sin of not winning souls is the sin of selfishness. I met a classmate of mine 
And the a girl who was my classmate during my primary school days in the fifties. And I said to her, I'm now a television preacher. She looked at me and began to cry. Why? Why are you crying? She asked me, why did God put you in our class? Was it not that through you, people like me will repent and become children of God? Now I have destroyed my womb. I can't be a mother. Men see my beautiful face and run after me, not knowing that my womb is destroyed because of your irresponsibility. When I go to hell, she said, I'll tell God I am where I am because somebody was irresponsible. What you asked him to do, he didn't do it. And he said, when I see you in heaven from hell, I'll raise my voice and protest. Didn't call for laughter, cause for weeping, because I began to cry. I saw the enormity of what she was saying. When a girl is pretty, her temptations are more than that of ordinary girls. And every man wants to touch her because of her beauty. As she said, she had contacted venereal disease. She said, if you get close to me, you feel the odor that comes from my private parts. And she began to cry. How many people will say this of you? that you didn't lead them to Christ. As a result, they have continued in their sins. It is selfishness that keeps us away from witnessing for Christ. So I call it the sin of selfishness. But I have another name. It is the sin of self-indulgence. We just want a life of ease. We don't want to confront anybody for fear of rejection. We don't want to be rejected. Every time we want to witness for Christ, the enemy will say to us, are you sure they will not reject you? you the, 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 so, the, in witnessing, the success lies in witnessing and leaving the result in God's hands. Don't worry about the result. That person you have spoken to, you are planting a seed in his or her life. Another person will add to that seed. Some other person will water it. A radio program will water it. TV program will add to it. Just witness and move on. Don't worry about the results. That is the success of witnessing. But we are afraid of rejection. Why are we afraid of rejection? Because of pride and arrogance. We don't, people, we don't want people to snub us. We don't want people to look. One of us, one of my friends, told me one early morning that he was going for witnessing. And he said, pray that God will humble me. And I said, Father, please make him humble. The first girl he talked to looked at him and looked at him and asked him, a grown-up man like you, all you know to do is to carry Bible about. You must be a stupid man. God will punish you. Get out of this place. <laughs> he put down his Bible and said, but for God, I would have slapped you. On his return, he told me what happened. I said, but that was the answer to our prayer, that God would humble you. Number three, it is also the sin of unbrotherliness. Can you imagine you having a relation? I had a girl from my home who drove all the way from Port Harcourt to see me in New York. She asked me, was I so bad that you couldn't witness to me? It took a pastor of deeper life, she said, to lead me to Christ. And she began to cry. The sin of not witnessing is the sin of unbrotherly, unbrotherly sin. We only care about ourselves, not about others. 
Number four, it is the sin of ungratefulness. I want to call it the sin of vile ingratitude. I don't know whether you know what it means to lead a man to Christ. You're saying to that person, if you come from a family where nobody has ever prospered, Jesus had died that you may prosper. You'll be the first to prosper in your family. You are going to change the legacy of your family. You are going to be a great person. That's what, you're, that's what you will do. Anybody you lead to Christ, you're telling that person, God will bless you with wisdom, with favor, with knowledge, with understanding, with the fear of the Lord, and with inner encouragement. Anybody that will receive all that will no longer be an ordinary person. When you lead somebody to Christ, you're telling that person, that sin that rules you shall rule you no more. For the power of God shall turn the weakness of the family in your life into strength. Where others fell in your family, you will not fail. Can you imagine what that means to somebody? I, I ran in, we had a program for Four Square Gospel Church in Lagos. A man came to me and said, after your prayer for me, I have become one of the five richest men in Nigeria. And God asked me to bring you an offering. One person you lead to Christ can change the story of your own life. I won't tell you how much he gave me, but I was shocked. I was shocked that somebody could give somebody the amount of money he gave me. In 1972, during a mission to Amadi Bele University, I was a missionary. A girl I led to Christ in that year has become a daughter to my family. She's a Yoruba girl. When a man proposed to her in 1976, she said to the man, you must come to you and save the man that led me to Christ. If he approves of you, I will marry you. But if he disqualifies you, I will not marry you. And the man came to you with his own driver. Every morning he would wash my car and clean and iron my dress, polish my shoes, and his own driver would polish his own shoes and, and iron his dress and wash his car. He never stood on his feet to talk to me. He would go on his knees. After doing it for five days, I called him and said, My brother, you are more than qualified. Go and marry her. The man later became commissioner for finance in Kogi State. And she became the chief pharmacist of the state. On their way to Canada, they came here and spent two weeks with us, cooking, serving. Every morning, they would go on their knees with their children to greet us. When my mother-in-law died, the girl took over the welfare of our guests, the cooking, the accommodation, the planning of that Burial became her responsibility. People kept asking me, when did you get such rich daughter? And I laughed. She came with money. She said, Daddy, I, I know it will be expensive to bury your mother-in-law. I have come with enough money. Don't give me any cobble. I'll take care of the needs. How did I feel? I felt like a king. In fact, I introduced her to everybody. Have you seen my daughter? Everybody, hey, come, come. You can lead a man to cry that will tomorrow become the governor of the state. And when you do, you are part of that government. And if they will show up there, everyone will come to stand still to receive you. Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah somebody? The sin of vile ingratitude 
We are not grateful for what God has done for us and what God wants to do for us. You know, Jesus said to Peter, I will make you a fisher of men. What does that mean? He said to me, I'll make you a soul winner. Why? Because he was grateful. When you are grateful to God for all he has done for you, he will promote you to the rank of a soul winner. I laid Dr. Potter to Christ, a cancer professor and a cancer surgeon in America. He told his mother how I led him to Christ. The mother, a rich woman. His father, a rich man. Suddenly, my wife and I, we became celebrities. Every time we showed up in America, he would send money to my wife and say, why are you here? Use this to shop. If you're in a hotel, send me the bills. One man led to Christ. He would give me so much money, I can't even mention it now. But many of us don't seem to understand. Tonight, I don't know. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. God wants you to be an instrument in his hands. He says, you are my what? Battle axe. When we discover the effectiveness of the battle axe, we discover the affliction. You must have caused Satan. Unless you have afflicted wounds on Satan, you cannot be called a battle axe. My heart bleeds when Christians allow witches to function in their villages. No. Every time people like Philip showed up in any place to preach, witches and wizards and occultists lost their businesses. Do you know you can make witches to lose their businesses? I have gone to crusade after crusade where, for example, we were in Isugu and our handbill fell into the shrine. The elders of the village came to me and said, our juju has run away because of your handbill. And the juju has also threatened that you must bring a, a, a goat, a ram, a tortoise, and a dog. Or else the Jew will not come back. What do I gain if the Jew comes back? <laughs> but that was not my reasoning. My reasoning was the Jew that ran away and the one that did not run away. Who will bring peace offering? Who? Me or the one that ran away? I told him to tell the Jew to bring me peace offering. I was waiting, or else I'll cause more trouble. <laughs> right where you are this night, I want you to aim at becoming God's battle axe. Now, in witnessing, you will not just witness as an ordinary person. You are also expected. Let's go back to chapter 16 of the book of Mark. We take 17, we take 18. And we take our love verse 20. Let's take 17, 18, verse 20. This night, I don't know whether I am tickling you. I want you to make up your mind to be God's battle axe. To be an instrument in his hands. To be used by God to cause trouble in the kingdom of Satan. Yes? And these signs shall follow them that believe. Raise your hand and declare and say, These signs shall follow me, for I believe. 
In my, Boa, in my name shall they cast out devils. In his name shall I cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. I will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If I take up serpents, they shall not hurt me. And if they drink any, if I drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt, hurt me. They shall lay hands on the sick. I will lay my hand on the sick and they shall recover. Do you know in Bielsa, we just sang the same ordinary songs we have been singing. A boy that had lodged bullets into his legs and could not walk on account of those bullets said Jesus appeared and removed the bullets from his legs I was amused when the governor began to shout hey I adopt you as my son you are not my son you will not go home come into the government house you are now my son and the boy had written a book of that encounter God can use you to set prisoners free God can use you to bring healing to the sick. When we speak of speaking in tongues, in 1985, we were smuggling Bibles into China. As we left Hong Kong and got to Canton border, the funny thing was the night before, my friend dreamt where we were all arrested. I won't give you the names of my friends who dreamt that dream. But I didn't dream that dream, so my argument was, if I did not dream that dream, God was saying, I will not be arrested. So you who will be arrested should stay back. So I went with my American friend, a crazy man. A man who had no respect for his life. Oh, he said to me, my when they arrest us, my embassy will come for our rescue. My brother, my own embassy will run. So don't pray about being, being arrested. As we got to the border, they said to us, hey, keep your suitcases on our machines. If there are Bibles in your suitcases, the machine will tell us. We'll save you the trouble of telling lies. But we you will jail you for 20 years. I saw all the high points of my life. I remembered all the good things in Nigeria. How I miss Ukwogo and... Uh, all the good things here. <laughs> Ask God, is this how I'll end? 20 years in, in uh, a Chinese um, prison. What will I look like? And God said, they have a weapon. You can speak in tongue. And I'll send angels to help you. Because speaking in tongue is calling the commander-in-chief through hot telephone line. I don't know whether you know in this state there are only two people who hold the phone lines. The army commander and the governor. But in this case, you have a hot telephone line with the commander in chief. Raise your hand and say, I have a hot telephone line with the commander in chief. <laughs> when you speak in tongue, you are calling for reinforcement. As I was speaking in tongue with my American friend, we were pacing up and down. The chief customer officer walked over to me and asked me, are you a native doctor? Our machines have packed up. What did you do? It was then I knew how effective speaking in tongue can be. So I said to him, hey, I said, if you don't want trouble, just shut up your mouth and leave me alone. He said, carry your trouble and go. God wants you to be an instrument in his hands. How many of you know only those who do business in the deep seas of problems of life will discover the power of this awesome God? Yes. 
Remember in China, I did not know anybody. In fact, in that smuggling, they don't give you anybody's uh, address or name. They show you a room where you keep your uh, your your boxes. The door will be open. You drop the boxes. You go to the restaurant to eat. While you're eating, the the real smuggler will come and carry your suitcases. You will not know him. He will not know you. If they arrest him, he doesn't know you. If they arrest you, you have never seen him. <laughs> I have crazy friends who have no regard for their lives. But the hotel was a beautiful hotel. It is for rich men. What they call wise one hotel. A hotel on an ocean. Floats on an ocean. Right where you are, this night, Moses said to the sons of God and Reuben, if you not do what God wants you to do, you have sinned. But let me go to number six. It is the sin of untruthfulness. For many of us have sung, I surrender. And here we have not surrendered everything. You should surrender fear. And should stop being disobedient. To the, is a sin against the sacred trinity. When Jesus said go. He says everything you need. Is with me. He said go for I am with you. Always. No matter where you are. He said I am with you. We had a program near Oran. And the chief. The elders of that village, that was in the days of noble, who has become a, a rich, stupendous, stupendously rich man. He was of the scripture union. And the elders were of the Bible church. They didn't want the program to hold. So the chief threatened to kill me if I showed up. As I prayed, God gave me a great idea. I drove to his house. I asked him, is it true you want to kill the man they call Omar? He said, yes, if he shows up, you have to deal with him. He said, Sabbath, I am the one you are talking about. He said, you? I said, yes, sir. The trouble is you don't know how to kill people. It's a secret you must not divulge. Now you have announced it. Everybody knows. So, if any harm comes my way, government will arrest you. For your own good, follow me to the crusade ground and sit next to me. <laughs> you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for your God song of mercy, I'm being enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, the great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't need to walk a move, I can't hallelujah, hallelujah.
to give you power go on after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you after the Holy Ghost shall have come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem Jerusalem is your village where you were born there are so many demons harassing your people there are so many witches ruling in your village they need to be put out of business. There are, you know, I didn't understand this until 1975. My village head came to me and asked me, when will you remember us and bring what God gave you to confront our many problems? About that time in my village, any successful man had only a few years to live and would die. About that time, poverty walked along the street of my village. You couldn't see anybody with <laughs> when Bill Wilson came to you. We, we drove through you. He said, oh man, do you know there's no, there's no building that speaks of a rich man in New York. And I said to him, that's why you're here. Help us. You couldn't find any building that spoke of a man that God has blessed in that village. The day we dedicated that village to Christ, the chief priest of my village died. And the elders brought the corpse to where I sat. They said, you preached, you prayed, all we did was say, Amen. Here is a corpse. My mother said, when they brought the corpse to me, that she also died. Because she knew what my people could do. You know, until recently, my village would kill you for stealing an ordinary yam. They would say the yam fell on you and killed you. I panicked. Father, what do I do? And this great God said, Oh man, call his name seven times. I'll put back his life. That was the first time I've seen that kind of miracle until 1992 at the pastor conference in the world at Concord Hotel. I gave scholarship, I gave food, books, accommodation to pastors. A man came and said he was a pastor when he was not. His friend said to him, why will you tell this man a lie? He replied and said, if I have to do a lie, let God judge me. In my own foolishness, I said to him, let God judge you now. And he dropped and died. Concord workers walked as a group to me and said, sir, you have killed somebody. Hey, shut up. Did I touch the man? I defended myself. They say, we don't know what you did, but the man is dead. And God said, call his name seven times. You know, from that day in my village, the hunters became the hunted. You didn't hear me. The hunters became the hunted. One of them was a member of my own family, a wizard. Argue with him in the morning, you'll be dead in the evening. But after I saw the power of God upon my life, I said to him, sir, any day you try that to stupid act again, you will die 
seven times without dying. He looked at me and said, oh my, you're a rat. I said, sir, I am a rat that Jesus sits on his back. I am not an ordinary rat. And soon after, he began to go through what I said he would go through. He died, we came to bury him. He came back to life and conferred the number of those he had killed and relapsed again. He did it six times and they asked him, what is the problem? He said, ask woman. I want to announce, you can do the same thing. You must not just hear these things only. You must go out from here and demonstrate the power of God. Raise your hand and say, I shall demonstrate the power of God. Don't be afraid. God will take care. You know, when that man died, a, a, a friend of mine, a medical doctor, walked over to me and said, let's take his corpse to the mortuary. And God said to me, ignore him. Just call his name. Beginning tonight, you sit on the fence no more. I don't know whether you know that Jesus was the best soul winner. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 15. What does it say? What does it say? For some are already turned aside. Is that correct? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. And worthy of all acceptation. That and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world. He came into the world. To save sinners. He came to win souls. Not to build a kingdom, but to save souls. Yes, sir. Of whom I am a chief. This is Paul speaking. He said he was, he was a chief sinner. You know, I was speaking the other day about those who have forgotten what God did for them when they were at the crossroad of life. I said there are five evils that will befall those who forget what God had done for them. Number one, people that will forget what God had done for them will begin to be demoted by God. Let's see the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18. When you begin to forget all that God had done for you, your life will begin to go down. Pride goes before the Pride goes before destruction. Before destruction. And an haughty spirit before haughty spirit. Haughty spirit is the tendency to cover your failure. You know there are things you ought to have done which you have not done. You act as though you did not uh, break the law. Number two, people who forget what God had done for them will fail the exams, the exams of life. You know, if you were sitting or uh, if you were taking an exam and they ask you to ride the highest mountain in the world and you wrote mountain um, mountain E2 will you pass? <laughs> those that forget what God had done for them will not be delivered from their enemies 
Let's see the book of Psalm chapter 78, verse well, 40 through 42. Let me put it this way. Those who forget what God has done for them are rejected by heaven. Yes, sir. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand. They remember not his hand. His hands. Nor the day when he delivered them. From All the day when he fought for them. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt. Yes. And his wonders in the field of Zion. Yes. And had turned their rivers into blood. And yes. their floods that they could not drink. Yes. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them. Yes. Which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. Yes. He gave also their increase into the caterpillar. Yes. And their labor unto the locust. Yes. He destroyed their vines with hell. Yes. And their sycamore trees with frost. Yes. He gave up their cattle also to the hell. Yes. And their flocks to hot thunderbolts. Yes. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger. Yes. Wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Yes. He cast his anger upon them. Because they forgot the days he fought for them. I, I don't know how many of you were real sinners. And you repented. Or you were just a good sinner. Which one were you? <laughs> it, I have told this story over and again. How that I was born with criminal tendencies. I had great nuisance value. I told you how I used to go to class. If they're teaching something I don't like. My mother was a tobacco smuggler. I would carry snuffs, tobacco, in a box, in a tobacco box. I'll blow air into it. And that air will carry the tobacco to the whole class. Everybody will be sneezing and coughing. Some will be crying. And I'll be crying more than them. And that, that class will come to an end. <laughs> I used to hear parents say to their children, if I see you with a man, I'll kill you. That was how bad I was. My cousin was a Indian hem dealer, what they call Papa Dopa. He taught me how to smoke Indian hem at a very tender age. Did I smoke the normal rap? No, I began by smoking what we call family mold. Four raps. <laughs> Tell me, if Christ had not changed me, Either I could have been dead, I would have been locked up in a prison house. This is why I have been zealous over the 53 years of preaching. When I remember what, do you know, I, at the age of nine, I was already a graduate drinker. Because my family has the largest uh, uh, raffia palm orchard in my village. We had many palm wine tappers who give us free drinks every other day. So as a child, you walk into the hall, the corn family hall, and drink the much you can. And, and I, I began to drink a, a bottle of palm wine, no, a bottle of native gin alone in one sitting. And what used to amaze me was the more I drank, the more normal I looked. Others would drink and stagger, but I never staggered. Because that was the trait of my family. Everybody was a drunkard. So uh, it's something I, I was born into, somebody would say. But I didn't need to die in it. If you are not grateful to God, you cannot be a witness for Christ. All those of you who were good <laughs> sinners. <laughs> I have a brother who was a good sinner. He would say to me, Mama, since I was born, I've never committed sin. You are the only criminal in this house. 
He was a good sinner, a self-righteous man. But people like me who were known criminals, huh? you know, before the war, if you were caught with Indian hemp, it's a serious offense. But I knew how to hide it. Nobody would know what I was carrying. Don't ask me how I used to carry Indian hemp and cross checkpoints. And then Jesus came. A boy that was the worst. Among my father's 13 children, I was the only troublemaker. Others were good. I never saw my brother tell a lie. I never heard him tell a lie. Up till now, he works for me. If he embezzles my money, he will tell you, brother, I misused 50,000 of your money. Can you forgive me or do I refund it? My father was to have blessed him the day he died. But he was, a, he was the captain of the football team and was busy playing. When he was invited by my father, he refused to go. He said he would like to wait until the match was over. So my father waited. The only person available was the bad boy. He said, hey, you wicked bad boy. Oh yeah, kneel down. And I knelt down. He said, okay. From now henceforth, whatever you lay your hand to do shall be money. You'll be the leader of this family. You are going to prosper more than any other person in this family. What you touch shall be money. In your prosperity, remember your brothers and your stepsisters. And he died. As soon as he died, my brother came in and asked, What did he say? So, my dear, I am now the bad boy, is now the new leader. Everybody fired behind me. <laughs> if my father did not say what he said that hour, I would have been nobody. And tonight I have come to be your own father. I was speaking to your life. He said, I'll give you power and you will be my ambassador in your village. And I want to announce that you'll be the main man of your family. Yeah. Can I have anybody who will promise to be an instrument in God's hands beginning this night? That you give excuses no more. That you will fear no more. That you will obey him that he may make his ambassador in your village, in your family. Even your clan. All those who are willing to become his battle axe. Can you stand up? Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art called, only Jesus do. Not pass me by. Say, 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 my humble cry. Why on others thou art called? Only. Jesus, do not pass me by. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Here is my heart, O oh While on others thou art called. Savior, 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 Savior,
calling Do not pass me Appear. Can we all now pray? Tell God what you want Him to hear about your life, what you want Him to do for you. Shall we pray?
in Jesus name Somebody help, somebody help her. Somebody help, somebody help. Put her down, put her down. Put her down, put them down. Somebody help, somebody help. Somebody help, somebody help. That's six. Somebody help. All those who are busy looking, that is not the right thing to do. Just say to God, don't pass me about. Looking at others does not make sense. That's somebody help again. Somebody help, please. That's number number 10. Somebody help over there. Put her down. She's covering herself with that handkerchief. That's number 11. Father, if there are others who are crying out to you, somebody help. That's number 12. Number 13. Number 13. Father, if there are others who are crying out, somebody help! Number 16. Number 16. Father, don't allow anyone to go back the same. All those who labor under this cloud of limitation, this cloud that confines those who labor under this limitation. Somebody help. That's 18. Father, if there is anyone who is crying his or her heart, saying, God, don't pass me by. Let your power fall. Somebody help, help, help. Let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let him be broken. God wants to touch now. That's one. Four more. That's two. Three more. Number four. Remaining one. 
Father, whoever is that one person, and the enemy is saying, not this night, I overrule the enemy, and I demand that that one person now have her freedom now. I feel the anointing on my left hand side between these two pillars. Yes, between those two pillars. Somebody help. Somebody help. Somebody help. Somebody help. What an awesome God. Jesus said, the Yamamio. I'm a man, man, this song, I yen ye, I can now, any came you. I'm a man, man, this song, I yen ye, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am a man, I mean, my man, this song, I yen ye, I can now, any young, any young, I came you. I'm a man, man, this song, I yen ye. Jesus said, I am a man. 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 Everyone that came in here sick become his or her physician. Everyone that came in here asking who will help me become his or her helper. Everyone that walked in here and has no money beginning tonight. Grant him or her financial miracles. <laughs> Father, everyone that walked in here longing and asking for a life partner, seven days from today, let there be a miracle of provision. Thank you for hearing me. For I ask in Jesus' name. 
very quickly. Remember, our night fast continues. Please don't go. Jesus, before he performed the miracle for Peter, asked him for his boat. Can, can I have somebody give me a... Let me have... We are going to help complete the children's hall. And then... We are going to help build a classroom for our schools. We are going to help build an empty an empty hall that can be used for an all-purpose hall. All those who want to give their boats of 100,000, 50,000, 30,000, 20,000, 5,000, 1,000. Can you step out here? I want to speak into your life. I'll give my own boat of 100,000. When you're married to a pretty girl, you have to pray for money. It takes money to keep a woman happy. Her skin growing and shining. It takes money to change her wardrobe change her shoe rack. Um, if you have children, it takes money to be a good father and a good mother. After the Holy Spirit, the next thing you need is money. As a bachelor, you can't marry a girl of your choice if you have no money. No girl wants to marry a hopelessly wretched, stupidly poor man. man that will explode her beauty. A man that will take care of her own parents and her brothers and sisters. It's not a business for the poor. So if you're coming out to plan to bring your own boat that Jesus may step into it. A boat of 50,000, 30,000, 20,000, 5,000, 1,000, Come out quickly, we don't have time. And just stand by the altar. Come with something. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me. It shall be permanent, permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me. Wait, wait. I, I don't want to see anybody sit down. If you don't have 1,000 and you have 100 naira, 500 naira, even one naira, stand up and come. God cannot multiply an empty hand. I have preached over and again that there is no prosperity without giving. If you don't have money, look around. Any well-dressed person, you have my permission to ask that person for offering. Tell him I don't have money, but I'm very humble. And I'm asking for offering of 100 naira, even 50 naira would do. But remember, your investment determines your harvest. Can you raise up your offering unto God, everybody? Raise it up to God. Please, when I pray, mark the words of my prayer. Go home playing that word back in your mind. But before I pray, tell God what you want him to do for you. Everybody, please pray. Pray. Tell God what you want him to do for you. In Jesus' name. 
Father, there are many who do not know that they don't need money to create money. They need your favor. They need your wisdom. They need your knowledge. They need your the knowledge of your ability. Father, they also need to come to a place where they will look at what others look at and see what others will never see. As many as now stand before you who are part of this fellowship, none shall age as a poor person. Yeah. Father, none shall age as a tenant. Yeah. Father, none shall age without means of mobility. Let your blessings upon them become reasons for their witnessing for you. Amen. Let their own relations come to them and say, I have seen what the Lord has done for you. Amen. And I want to be like you. Amen. Father, in the book of Zechariah, you say the day will come that ten of our relations shall come to us and say we want to follow you to church for we have found that the Lord is with you everyone who is standing before you this night must become the main man the main girl of his or her family call their destiny helpers to the main road Bring creativity and imagination to them. Amen. Bring open doors to them. Amen. Beginning tonight, let good things begin to happen in their lives. Amen. Those they have never known nor seen shall now come and help them Amen. to become what you want them to be. Amen. Every obstacle is now a miracle. Where there is no way, you have already created a byway for them. Amen. Therefore, every hand rests up to you tonight. Rub that hand with your Holy Ghost oil. Amen. And whatever they shall lay their hands to be, shall prosper. Amen. Finally, I declare that everyone who has heard my voice tonight shall be like trees planted along Calabar, Oron, Cameroon rivers. They will bloom in season. They will bloom out of season. And every voice that speaks against them beginning now shall speak no more. 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 Who has the keys to the car? The car for dedication? The, this house? Father, there is some evidence of your faithfulness. A key to a house. As you protect and sanctify this house. Use this as a contact point. For those who are asking you for accommodation. Yeah. Father, we want to join David to say, Once we were young, now we are old. We have never seen the righteous nor his children beg bread. None here shall be a beggar. Yeah. Therefore, your people shall owe no more. They shall borrow no more. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow them Amen. wherever they go. And one million productive, inspiring, creative ideas shall follow them. Shall follow them. Shall follow them. Shall follow them. Father, beginning this night. No man born of a woman 
shall ignore them anymore. Amen. Father, bring each one to a place where his or her presence shall command attention. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please, as our uh, chief of staff, Pastor Joe, will be singing, don't push anybody. Don't nudge anybody. Don't elbow anybody. Just find your way, drop your own, and go back to your seat for the grace. Don't go before the grace, or else you may walk into this grace. Can Pastor Joe lead us? Program chairman for the night, get ready to don't make any announcement again. Just dismiss us. Ami kobong amaka kininde mede kusenu bo tu idemese. Ami kobong amaka. Ami kobong amaka. Ami kobong amaka. to my family can you raise your voice and declare and say I am now the main man of my family 
Raise, raise up your hand as I call on Bishop Simon Udeme to come and say the closing prayer. Remember, some of the songs we have sung, as you go, sing them. You'll increase the anointing of God upon you. Joe, whether you remember, the, whether you know the right words or not, you'll be amazed what it will do for you. A young man was in our meeting in Lagos. And the police arrested him. He kept singing a manner. He didn't sing it correctly. But you know, even when it was singing jargon, he brought down anointing. The police, after the police arrested him, they asked him, my friend, where is your house? <laughs> you have sung this song too long. Where is your house? He told them his house and they now drove him to his house. So when we go from here, just sing any song you remember, whether you remember it correctly or not. I, I can't even remember what my brother was, when he told me what he sang, I laughed so hard. But it worked for him. God knew his problem. He didn't understand the language. And it didn't stop heaven from...